Right. Who was God being merciful to from everlasting? We're talking about. No, we're talking you, about the wisdom of God. Because you we're know, talking you about the wisdom that, of God. Because if you answer that point, wisdom it of God. Your point. No. That's the only no. reason why I'm going. One to second. One you're second. You're being inconsistent. No. We're talking like, about no. Proverbs eight, and you're doing the typical Jehovah's Witness trick oh, that when you way. try to debate a passage, they jump to another passage. Are you aware? Are you going to make your argument or not? I'm going to respond to the passage. Right. Make your argument then. Okay. So are you aware? Go on. In the Greek, it doesn't say by him. Are you aware of that? Yes or no? Make your argument. I'm asking, Bob. I'm waiting for you to make no, your argument. No, I'm asking you a question. Right, I'll time you. Bob, no time, no. What we saw in the Old Testament is the, the second passage that he went to. It doesn't. In Micah 5.2 states that the word describing the sun's going forth is from everlasting. Bob. And that can also be translated as forever. So my question to the Unitarian is a simple one. When is the beginning of forever? You said Tertullian agrees with you, yeah? Yeah. Okay. yeah. He says comments that for Tertullian, there was a time when there was no sun and no sin, when God was neither father nor judge. I can get all these extra, I can get, Okay. He believed that Jesus had a beginning. So do you apologize to the camera for lying that Tertullian agrees with you, yes or no? How are we doing? I'm all right. How are you, bro? Yeah, not too good. We were, we were meant to have a conversation. A unit? Are you that unitarian, yeah, bro? Unitarian, yeah, if you yeah. want, we can have that conversation now if you want to. Yeah. Peace be with your sister. Have you have you been have you been educating them on the truth? God bless no, you. you. I would actually because you said on, on camera that yeah. Unitarians are not Christians. Genesis three. Yeah. God is walking no, in the garden. That, that, yeah. Well, let, let, let's talk. Let's talk, yeah, all of us together. Yeah, yeah. Are you all right to do it against the railing? Yeah, yeah. yeah? No. Jude, Jude. So, so go on. Do you like? So, just for the record, you're a Unitarian, and as you know, I don't accept Unitarians as Christians. Um, I believe that you're following a modernist religion comes after the Enlightenment, and it's not the historical Christian faith. Okay. So, can I? Um, can we even go back to? Council of Nicaea. Yeah, of course. Okay. So I want to get a backdrop to this. So yeah. I think some of the, one of the biggest misconceptions about the Council of Nicaea was Arius. Yeah. People believe, or they, the misconception that Arius didn't believe Jesus was divine, and also they, the argument wasn't whether Jesus was God, it was what sense Jesus was God. Are you aware of that? So can I can I reply to that? Yeah. yeah. Firstly, no one who has studied the Council of Nicaea has that misconception. Everyone who studies the Council of Nicaea knows that Arius believed that Jesus was divine yes. in the sense of a demigod, but in, in the sense of, because Arianism was a response to modalism, the thing that no, Arian... No, no, that's true. Let me finish. Let, let's have a conversation, not interrupt. Because Arianism was a response to modalism, the, the thing that... Wait, wait, no, wait, 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 I'll try not to go on for too long, but I'll get through my points quicker if you don't interrupt. So because Arianism was a response to modalism, and, and what Arius was trying to preserve was the, the, the uniqueness of the divine, he placed the Logos, Christ, in, on, on the line of a created thing. A created thing that had divinity over all other things. And that's what Arius believed. But a Christian, as his own bishop Antony rejected him and condemned him, believes that Christ is uncreated. And the debate at the Council of Nicaea was what was the relationship and the nature of the Father and the Son. The Trinity was not discussed at the Council of Nicaea, ever. And people who say that it was invented at the Council of Nicaea are just showing that they're ignorant of history. So you just made a claim that Arius was in response to modernism, that's false. So where's your evidence for that? Well, it's just through looking at the history. I mean, I don't, I don't have the names now you know, off the top like of my head. Tertullian believed that Jesus was created. It's way before Arius. No, hold on one second. Tertullian, there, there's a debate about what Tertullian says. says the son was begotten. Was yes, created. begotten, begotten. But begotten in this sense is the same sense that the light comes from the sun and he's begotten of the sun. The light the light is not something that is separate from the sun it is something that is is um, um, is an expression of what the sun is 
you're, you're, this, you're wrong, Bob, seriously. Well, I mean, this is your claims. Okay, so but but the point is, but hold on one second. Let's be clear about something. Firstly, Tertullian isn't a church father. I'm not saying he is, but you're saying right? that Arius is the one who... Like, Tertullian is just an ecclesiastical writer. And there is debate among scholars of Tertullian about what he believed. And it isn't as simple as just saying, oh, he believed that the Logos was created. That's just not no, true. No, it's true. 100%. Anyway, I mean, but I don't believe what I don't have to believe. Let's just, yeah, okay. for the sake of argument, just because because it's a bit of a red herring to the debate. Okay. I'm just going to say, well, Tertullian teaches that Christ is created, okay. and my answer to that is so what? Okay. So, I right. believe that Christ is uncreated. So, you're not debating Tertullian. You're debating me. Okay. So the logos. Who used the term logos? Where did that term come from? Well, it's you, in it's, first century. In the first century, it's in the Gospel of John. It's in the writings of John. So, who so, was so using one it? second. You're asking a question, allow me to answer. The, the thing is, if you ask a question, you've got to, you've got to let me answer. So John is using the term logos. You find it in his, in his gospel. In the beginning was the word. The word there is the Greek word logos. And he's using the term logos there in a way that connects to both wider philosophical culture that was also using logos as a term in philosophical discourse and also within the, the Septuagint Jewish literature uh, that emanated particularly out of Alexandria, where you've got Jewish scholars talking about the two powers. And one of those powers is the word of God. So are you aware that Philo used Yes, yes. yes. So That's one of the people I'm talking about, about who talks about the two powers. Well, <clears throat> then Philo said Jesus was the firstborn and was the heavenly Adam and was God's first creator. And Philo so was he, before Jesus. Yeah, I know. No, he died about 50 AD. Philo didn't speak about Jesus. No, he didn't. No, I'm talking about... <clears throat> he spoke about He spoke about the Logos. Logos. Yeah. That's not my point. <clears throat> but he didn't speak about Jesus. So his concept of the Logos, yeah. he believed that God, the only God, was transcendent, yeah. outside of time, couldn't yeah. enter into time, yeah. and that the Logos was God's first creator in whom he made all things through, yeah. and was the heavenly Adam, yeah. was God's firstborn and God's first created. Yeah. That's what Philo... Uh, but Philo, Philo isn't a Christian, and we're not bound to what Philo says. What I'm saying is, we're you know, bound to what we're bound to what the apostles and the prophets teach, and what the apostles and the prophets teach mm -hmm. is that the the divine logos is eternal. Show me. So let me ask you this question. It's just, it's just a logical question. Yeah. Does God change? Depends on what context. Right. Does God change in that He becomes something that He is not, that He progresses? in some quality that he doesn't already possess. Okay, so, for example, there's the context in Malachi, I change if not, yeah? So, because in Malachi 3. Yeah. And in that context, it's saying this, it says, and therefore, O Jacob, you are not consumed. And it says that they've, they've forsaken my ordinances. And then it goes on to says, return unto me and I will return unto you. So, so you believe God changes? No, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Well, that's that, the question no, I'm no, asking you. Do you believe people, God changes? What, well, in that context, all of his attributes, according to the Bible, are eternal, even right. his mercy. Right. So, if all of his attributes are eternal, is his word eternal? Is his mercy? Let's talk about mercy. No, 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 no. No, no. no. one that? second, one second. You, you, you're not controlling the conversation. This is a conversation about Christ. Yeah. It's a conversation yeah. about the word. So, so the question is, you believe mercy yeah, we, we, is can, we can do question for question, that's fine. But answer my question and then I'll answer one of yours. So, we don't need to be like Muslims. Let's, let's have a nice, calm conversation. Do, we, do you believe that the Word of God is eternal? The Word of God is eternal. All His attributes are eternal. Right. So my question is, do you believe the Word of God is eternal? I said all His attributes are eternal. So answer the question I'm asking specifically, is the Word eternal? Yes. It's from eternal, yeah, but He right. had a beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So, We've a, and I'm, I'm, I'm now, I'm now going to let you take over and ask a question, but I just want to summarize my point that we've established. The point that we've established is that the Word of God is eternal. If Jesus is identified as that Word, that means Jesus is eternal. Now you ask a question. So Jesus is identified as the wisdom of God, which has a beginning. Although it's from everlasting, it makes it specifically that he was, wisdom was created. Would you say mercy is eternal? Okay. So the, the, the question is, is mercy eternal? The answer is no. Okay, so mercy, mercy, mercy is, uh, is a quality that, uh, that God has. Mercy as an action is an energy that God does, and these have beginnings in time. 
So what we mean by this is that God obviously always has the ability to show mercy, but this comes from his love, because God is love. But when he demonstrates mercy, that, that action of giving mercy to you or to me is a moment in time. It exists when God performs it. Okay, so listen to this. This is Psalms 103 verse 17. Yeah. It says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Yeah. Meaning there is no beginning to his mercy. Right, so let's, let's because I think this is a bit of a red herring, right? Yeah, because I'm not even going to argue this point because it's a bit of a red herring. We're talking about the word, right? Let, 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 you know, I'm not even going to argue that point. I'll just give it you. Mercy is eternal. Let's move on though. My, my, so now let me ask you a question. Right? No, 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 no. Now let, now, me, now let me ask you a question. No, now, now let me ask you a question. Now let me ask you a question. Now let me ask you a question. Because we've established that the Word is eternal. And we've established that the Word is also called the wisdom of God. Are you trying to suggest to me that you believe that there was some point at which God did not have his wisdom? It's, well, shall we read what Scripture says? Forget about. Let's not. No, I want you to answer my I want question. Us to go into the Bible because we'll come to that. But answer my question, that please. The Bible doesn't say. No, hold on one second. And I don't want to say things that the Bible. I doesn't want say. you to. This an, is my authority. I'm not, we'll come to that. But I want you still to answer my question. I was courteous to you, and I did that. So now do the same. I'm going to ask you what the Bible says. My, what my, I think my, from my own human understanding. My question to you, and if you don't answer my question, I'll just ask it again: mm -hmm. Is are you su suggesting that there was a point in time where God did not have wisdom? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. No. Right, so, are you saying that God always had his wisdom? According to Proverbs, yes. That's what's... Right, there you go. Let's, let's stand, God always had his let's wisdom. Stand on the Bible. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just listen to what you've just said. You've just said God always had his wisdom. According to the Bible. Uh, right, so if God always had his wisdom, mm -hmm. And the divine logos is also identified as the wisdom. Then that means that the divine logos, the wisdom, which are the same, have always existed. They did not. To this, I know you're going to go to Proverbs eight. Let's go to Proverbs eight. Let, let's go to Proverbs eight. But I, I, I want you to recognise that you cannot maintain a contradiction. You cannot say in one breath that God always had his wisdom okay, what, well i mean let me finish my point not what I say. let me can we i suggest we start doing this timed could we get a time no, 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 forget about time I'll be right okay then if you interrupt me again i'll insist upon a timer okay right you cannot maintain a contradiction you cannot say in one breath god always had his wisdom and always had his word and then in the next breath say that that these things are something that God created. That's what the Bible says, not what I'm saying. Right. So, so you've got a problem with the Bible, not me. We have you on camera saying that God always had his wisdom. Does God it says it in the Bible. Right. So that means that it didn't it's not something that's created. The, that's what it says. Right, let's go. Okay. So so let's, let, let's go to Proverbs eight. Let's go to Proverbs eight. Verse twenty two. So firstly, can I just establish is that a new world translation? So I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. No. Good, okay, because I wouldn't accept a, a discussion about the, 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 the translation. I much prefer talking what the Greek actually says, but don't worry. I can get the Greek out if yeah, you want. No, 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 for this. Well, the, I can get the Hebrew out for this passage if you want. Yeah, go on. Let's go with uh, yeah. verse 22. Go on. No, let, let's read the passage, all right? And we'll just, no, from verse 22, we'll read the whole passage and we'll discuss it no, verse no, by verse. No. Okay. Do you want to read the whole passage all together? Yeah, we'll read the whole and then, passage. And then we'll go back so here's here's what I suggest we do. We read the whole passage. I give my summary. You give your summary. Is that fair? Yeah. Right. So I'm going to read it from verse 22 mm -hmm. to verse 30. Yeah. Okay. So, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of His way, before His works of old. From everlasting, mm -hmm. I was established. From the beginning, from the earliest times of the earth. Mm -hmm. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abounding with water, let me finish. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While he had not yet made the earth and the fields, nor the first dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when the springs of the deep became fixed, when he set for the sea its boundary so that the water would not transgress his commands, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world his earth, and having my delight in the sons of men. So I'm going to give my summary, and then you give your summary. 
So what the scripture is teaching is that the wisdom of God is another person. It isn't the same person as Jehovah God, right? I think we agree on that much. Yes, we do, right? But that, that, that person was there even before creation and was always there from everlasting, always in the presence of God and was there at the beginning of creation. So he was there before creation and he was there at the beginning of creation. And he marks his identity out in those two phases. One, that he is a possession of God and always there in, with God. And two, he was there at the foundations of the world. So he is above so the world. So how would you 24? summarize it? How do you understand verse 24? Do you not want to summarize how you see the passage first? Well, I'm just asking you, how do you Okay, uh, so I will, I, I will, I understand what verse... I was brought forth when there were no springs abounding with water. Now, what does that mean? It means before time, before time even existed, the son is begotten of the father. That he is, and begotten means to proceed from. And this is an eternal movement. It doesn't have a beginning and it doesn't have an end. And so the son is begotten of the father. He proceeds from the father. And this is something that has happened eternally. And why do I believe it happens? Eternally begotten. Yes, eternally begotten. Where and why do I, let, let, why, well, uh, okay, sorry, are we going to yeah. do this interrupting thing or shall we do it timed? No, no, go on. I'm right. But listen to what it says in verse 22. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way. Now tell me, remember it says, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way. So when did God have a beginning? Say that again, sir. Listen to the passage carefully. What verse? From? Yahweh. Where, where are you reading from? Go on. Verse 22 okay. says, Yahweh possessed me yeah. so at so the beginning said, of his way. All his attributes are eternal. Right, one Even second. His mercy. So that means, that means if, if, if the wisdom of God is possessed by the Father at yep. the beginning of his way, yep. then that means it had no beginning. So you're saying mercy has no beginning as well? I'm, I've already given you that point. So I don't point. think... This is, this is my point, Bob. This right. Is, so do you accept that wisdom is eternal? All of God's attributes are eternal. Brilliant. Is wisdom one of those attributes? Definitely. Fantastic. So, so, same with mercy. So do we agree that wisdom is eternal? And mercy. Do we agree? Fine. Do we agree that, do we agree that wisdom is identified as Jesus Christ? 100%. So we have just agreed, sequen sequen yeah. sequentially, we have just agreed yeah. that wisdom is eternal, Jesus is that All wisdom, therefore, listen, 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 because you're not listening, you have just accepted that wisdom is eternal yeah. and that Jesus is that wisdom. Let me finish a sentence or agree to no, have this time. Right, this can we get this time? No, 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 but you don't like, need to keep repeating can you, can you start timing this? No, no, don't time it. No, no, we're going to time it because no, you're no, just interrupting. Because I want to pin you out on something. No, you, you, you'll have your time to speak. Don't repeat but the same thing over you, and over again. Because you keep interrupting and the more you interrupt, the more I'll repeat. Bob, so the way that we stop have, this... I always have a calm conversation. So have a calm conversation. I am, but listen, So stop interrupting. Don't keep repeating the same thing. So stop interrupting. So stop interrupting. Don't keep repeating yourself. Then don't interrupt and I won't need to repeat myself. How many times have you said this? Right, I'm going to repeat myself because you interrupted and each time you interrupt I will repeat myself again if you don't like that agree to doing it timed and then I'll only have two minutes right you have just accepted that the wisdom is eternal if the wisdom is eternal and we have just accepted together that Jesus is that wisdom ergo it follows naturally from the premises to the conclusion that Jesus is eternal Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Now reply. Now I've said to you, all of his attributes, including mercy, which you said was not eternal. Okay, let me just see. I haven't interrupted you. Which, um, even his mercy, which you said wasn't eternal, but now you've changed it. Why did you change your mind about mercy? Okay, so I'll answer that question. Okay. But I want you to answer my question, because at the end of this, I will answer my question. Okay. The reason why I accepted that mercy is eternal... No, you didn't, you didn't, listen, you, didn't. you just asked me a question. Why didn't you yes, you've before? just asked me a question. Allow me to reply, my friend. Allow me to reply. The problem is you're too eager. You're not even letting me finish in a sentence before you interrupt. All right? You asked me, why did I change my mind about eternal being... Uh, mercy. mercy being eternal? Because for me... This is a red herring to the topic that we're talking about and I don't want to get distracted from talking about the Logos which is actually what we should be talking about. So that's why I gave up that hill. I don't want to fight that hill, so I just give it to you. 
So now I just, so, so that we're not arguing about it, and so we can focus on the actual this, topic, this why, that's why I, I, I just gave it up. The reason why I focus on a mercy, if all of God's mercies are eternal. Right, yes, but, go on. But we recognise there is a point in time where God actually establishes mercy or, or became merciful. Yeah. yeah. Same ways, the wisdom of God is eternal, yep. but yet there's a point in time that it came forth. I don't understand how you cannot understand those two concepts. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so now, let, let, now let me ask you a question, because I wanted to ask you this question. When does, when does God have a beginning of his ways? So this is what I'm telling you. You're not, you're not listen to all of his attributes are eternal. Great. So even if you, you're going to keep pinning me and saying, yes. when was wisdom, wisdom, all of his attributes are eternal. Right. Including so, his wisdom. Including his mercy. Is Jesus wisdom? Yes. Thank you. But there's a point in time that it came forth, like his mercy. And I can't, so, can you not see that? Right. So analogy? you're talking, you're, well, so what you're saying is, he's, yeah, so what you're saying is he's begotten in a moment in time. Right. Was God always merciful? Right. So hold on one second. Okay. So hold on one second. I'm not interested in this discussion no, about it's, mercy. It's foundational. Listen, no, it's, it's a red herring. No, it's not a red it's herring. herring. It's foundational to the concept of God. So let's, and his let, let's come back to this. Let, let's come back to this. Let's come back to this. Okay. Yeah. Right. What we see in scripture and what we agree is that the wisdom of God is eternal. Where we disagree is that you're saying that he's brought forth in a moment in time, right? I want to make sure, I want to make sure that I understand you properly so that I'm not misrepresenting you. So you, our disagreement is that you're saying that he is begotten in a moment in time and I'm saying he's eternally begotten. Have I summarized correctly the nature of our disagreement? So, yes, so what I'm saying is, Bob, I'm just when, asking when, if yeah, have when, I summarized yes, that correctly. When you're when you're using wisdom, no, I want you, you to, can use mercy correctly. as well. Yeah, you can use mercy as well. No, so, so in the same I'm way not, you understand I'm not interested wisdom, in a discussion on mercy. We're no, talking about wisdom. It is it encompasses the nature of God. Okay. That's my point. So coming back to the logos, which is the actual topic of conversation, yeah. right? We've established that God's mercy is eternal, right? Now, let me ask you this question, okay? Can we get to the scripture because I think we. Philosophy sometimes. I, I, I am not moving away from scripture. Can we go through John? Right, no, one second. What, one second. We, we've not finished in Proverbs. It's not finished in Proverbs. Because, listen. Listen, listen. Listen. Yes, listen. Listen. Right? Don't listen, don't listen to the, the, the Muslim support group. They just hate no, Christians. No, 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 no. They just hate the Trinity. No, no, no. So what, we, what we've got here... Don't, don't take sides. Yeah. Don't take sides at all. <laughs> no, he hasn't. He's just turned up. <laughs> Bless his heart. So, so the point is, right? Listen to what it's talking about. It says, from everlasting, I was established. From everlasting, I was established. Mm -hmm. Now, it's using a personal pronoun there, right? So it's saying that Christ was everlastingly established as a person. So at what point? So what, no, 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 no. It says I, I, not some attribute. It's talking about a personal pronoun. In, in the book of in the book of Proverbs, God's understanding is uh, are personified. Yeah. Do you do Wisdom you is personified? Yes. Do you understand in Proverbs? But, but we, all of God's attributes. But we both agree. Some of these attributes. We agree that. Are personified. But, but it doesn't we agree. Always mean but, that they are a person, a literal person. Do you agree that this passage identifies two persons? Identifying the wisdom of God, yes, definitely. Yes. Does it identify the wisdom of God as a person apart from Yahweh? Jesus claimed to be the wisdom of God, no doubt. And the wisdom of God that, came forth. That's not my question. Coming forth, there's no concept in anyone's language, in the Hebrew or it's the Greek, question. in the Septuagint, coming forth is an eternal... That's not my concept. question. Okay, that's so not my so question. I'll try again. My question is, and the thing is, you've already agreed on camera. We've, yeah. we've already got you saying yes. So I'm just All asking it. Eternal, yes. That's still not my question. Okay, what's your question? My question is, do you agree that this passage identifies two persons? It, pers it personifies wisdom, yes. Does it identify two persons? It personifies wisdom. I don't know what, what more you want me to say. So it personifies understanding. The personific there's a difference between saying a passage personifies someone and saying it identifies another person. If you're saying it identifies another person, what you're saying is it really and truly distinguishes between two people. If you're saying that it only personifies an attribute, then what you're saying is it speaks metaphorically about something that isn't a person. So my question to you, now I've made it clear, is does this passage identify two persons? 
Yahweh and the wisdom of and the wisdom of God. Yes, brilliant. So one of those persons is saying that from everlasting I was established. What's your definition of everlasting? Like I said, all God's attributes are eternal. Wisdom is an attribute of God. Jesus became the wisdom of God. Simple. I don't know how hard, that's not hard to So understand. so does everlasting have a beginning? No, it doesn't. No. All, right. of, all of God's attributes have Oh, eternal. I don't Great. Know what, what more do you want to... Because what you, what you're saying what you what you're saying is a contradiction. No, There's a contradiction. No, no. Let me explain what the contradiction is. Because on one breath, you're trying to say that the wisdom of God is eternal. It never had a beginning. Jesus Christ is that wisdom. But then in the we next, forth, but then in the next, what into... when you say brought forth, do you believe he's created? Of course. Right. But that means that he had a beginning in time. Jesus, yes, of course he did. But if I had a beginning in time, he's not eternal. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not, all and that's God, the contradiction. No, you, listen, all of God's attributes are eternal. Wisdom is an attribute of God, right? You accept that? Yes, I believe Thank that. Thank you. Jesus personified that attribute. What don't you get? Right. Let me just. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Thank you. Yeah. Do you? He he won't. Okay, act listen. Bro, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Bro. Be honest. Do you understand? Bro, you're talking to me. Okay. Talk to me. No, because right? I might not maybe make sense. You, you are not making sense. Thank you. Because you are asserting two contradictory things. You are saying in one breath that God's wisdom is eternal mm -hmm. and that Jesus Christ is that wisdom. But then in the next breath, you're saying that Jesus Christ is created. No, no, I'm not Something that is created no, is it. not I'm eternal. I said all of God's attributes are yes. eternal. Great. And is Jesus that attribute? No, wis no, wisdom is an attribute. Mercy is an attribute. So is so is Jesus is Jesus so was God, the wisdom okay, of God. You, let me ask you. Was God always merciful from everlasting? Right. Hold on. You want right. to answer this? No, no, no. no. You so answer. red herring. I, I accept red that herring. it is. It is. No. It is. So it is. It is. It is. Was God always merciful from everlasting? It is. Yes. There we go. He was. So now, guy, one, second. On. How can, one second. Who was God being merciful? One second. No. Who was God being merciful? One second. No, no, no. One second. This is why I don't want it. One second. One second. You will run away. You're going to interrupt. If you're going to interrupt, you're going to run from the subject. No, no, no. The subject is the logos. I'm not the one trying to I'm change about the all subject. Of his, no, I'm talking about all these no, 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 no. We're you're talking. One concept right, of his brother. Oh, shall we just shout over one another? Shall we just have a shouting match? Is that what you want to do? Because I can do that, Bob, and I will do it for longer. You're being disingenuous. Brother, brother. Try to calm yourself. Have a conversation, or agree to having it timed. Otherwise, I just start shouting over you, and then you'll complain. I don't want to do that. I would like to have a conversation with you. Okay, so let me let me just have a. Uh, Can you answer that question? One second. So I just want to pull up the verse where right everlasting. The the Hebrew term for everlasting is miloah mi, miolam. Okay, what does that mean? Right, it means it means from a lamb properly concealed. The vanishing point, generally time out of mind, eternity, frequentatively, right? That's what the Hebrew means. So it means, God listen, mercy, yeah? listen, listen, yeah. right? No, it's talking about the wisdom of God. We're still in Proverbs 8. And I have not moved. Well. That's my point. Are you listening? Because you have to be right. Consistent. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, since he does not want to have a conversation, I will just have to raise my voice. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the term Miolam means from the vanishing point. It means eternity. Something that is eternal, my friend, does not have a beginning. Can I ask you a question? Right. Do you see what happens when you interrupt? Can you, can I Do you want to have a conversation now? Okay, go on. Go on. Right. Who was God being merciful to from everlasting? We're talking about, no, we're talking about the wisdom of God. Because you we're know, talking about the wisdom that, of God. Because if you answer that point, wisdom it of God. your point. No. That's the only no. reason why I'm going One to One second. One you're second. You're being inconsistent. No. We're talking I'm about not. Proverbs 8 and you're doing the typical Jehovah's Witness trick oh, of jumping. I know. I know you're not. I know you're not. 
but you're doing the typical Jehovah's really? Witness. Did the Jehovah's Witness say this? Yes, Jehovah's Witnesses do all the time well, never got that when you try to debate a passage, they jump to another passage. No. I'm not budging from Proverbs 8. You Proverbs took us there, so, this is my so let's stick with okay. Proverbs 8. So. And since you have continuously interrupted me, I will finish my point before I stop speaking, and then you can reply. Okay. The passage, the word, everlasting, means eternity. Eternity. So my question to you, my question to you, my question to you is this. Yeah, I, I'm talking, bro. My question to you, yeah? He can hold it if he wants to. My question to you is where is the beginning in eternity? When the, no beginning in right, so the passage states, right, and then I'll let you take control of the conversation again. I really want to, right? want to get to when, the when, when it says, listen, listen, when it says, I have, mm -hmm. who is speaking there? Wisdom is speaking. And who is that? The wisdom, wisdom, wisdom of God. Who is that? Jesus. Thank you. No, no, wait. Let, me, let me finish. Go on. Thank you. Go on. Jesus embodies the wisdom of God. That's my point. He is the wisdom of God. He embodies the wisdom of God. So he's not the wisdom of God. There was a point of time, wisdom was brought forth. In the same ways, when I was asking you, and the reason why it's very relevant, if you understand all of God's attributes, yep. you will not be pinpointing on wisdom. And that's what I'm not trying to throw red heaven. You are. Mercy is from everlasting. And I'm asking you, but yep. Directly, who was God being merciful to right. from everlasting? Right. And what we're talking about. Right, right, right. And the thing is, I'm not going to move out of Proverbs because you want you to want move to, out of Proverbs. No, you have avoided the point that I've made. I'm and I'm going to raise the point again. I'm not avoiding it. You are avoiding the point. You avoided the point. You avoided the point. Here's the point that I made that you just want to avoid. And you're running from it. And I don't blame you because the passage that you went to contradicts what you claim. It doesn't. So, my question to you is. Where is the beginning of an eternal continuum? All of God's attributes are That was eternal. not the question. There is no beginning in eternity. Thank you. So when he says, I was established from eternity, what does that mean? All of God's attributes are eternal. Like, no. let, me, let me explain. The I was. Your, your, your button interrupted. Oh, you don't like it though? I don't mind. I'm just saying. Right. I don't mind if you, because sometimes it happens. Sometimes you might. Okay, so don't complain if you don't want to. I'm not complaining. Right. You are, because you just said you're interrupting. I'm just saying that Go you're on. double standards. That's Go right. on. I don't mind if Go you on. interrupt. Sometimes right. you, know, you need to pin people uh, down. Yeah. It's not a problem at all. Go on. Um, the point I'm trying to make is this point. All of God's attributes are eternal. Yeah. There are, there are point in times that they are brought forth. Yeah. Same with wisdom, same with mercy, same with understanding, and all of God's attributes. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, yes, the wisdom of God is, was eternal. All God's attributes were eternal. Right. Jesus, at a point of time, yep. embodied it when right. it was brought forth. Uh, can I reply to that? Yeah. Right. So I hear what you're saying. You might not agree. Right. Okay. But, but there is a contradiction in what you're saying. Why? I'm trying to get you to see that because something that is created mm -hmm. has a beginning. Mm -hmm. Something that is uncreated has no beginning. Mm -hmm. It is eternal. Mm -hmm. And if you're saying that the wisdom of God, as we've seen from Proverbs 8, yep. is eternal, yep. then that means, and you identify that wisdom of God as Jesus Christ, then that means that Jesus Christ is not created. And your contradiction is you're trying to say that Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God and the wisdom of God is eternal, but Jesus Christ is created, but wisdom is not created. That's a contradiction. So let me, let's read the passage. I have been doing that. So I have been it doing says that. it's from everlasting. Right, yes. There was a point in time it was brought forth. From everlasting. So like, wait, 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 wait. Let's read it. Okay, we'll read it, right? Yeah. From ever, let's let's just go it, and I'll, I'll read to the point where he says he brought forth. Listen, we're not going to agree on this. I'll, I'll, I'll prefer to get yeah. to the meat. Of yes, the I know. We 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 will we'll, we'll change our well, verse. No, no, okay, we on. used a passage. It didn't work. We use another passage. Okay, I know how it works. Okay, go on. Right. From everlasting, I was established. Okay. Would you agree that that sentence is saying that the I that is speaking Wisdom, yeah. is eternal? Wisdom, yeah, is eternal. And that I, who is that? Jesus embodied it when he was brought so, forth. So Jesus, he no, is Jesus, is Jesus that eternal 
Is Jesus that wisdom? So, if Jesus is saying wisdom existed... Are you sa I want to be clear. Are you saying that Jesus Christ Jesus that is that wisdom? Jesus embodied that so wisdom. So he's not the so wisdom he, or he, he is the wisdom? He becomes the wisdom of God. Of right. So that means if he embodies it, if he, if, if he is that thing of God that is wisdom, mm -hmm. then that means he does not have a beginning. Read it. Right. Let's keep going. From everlasting I was established, from the beginning, from the earliest times of the earth, when there was no depths, I was brought forth. Okay. Right. Now, one second. Now, What's so, it mean? Yeah, you I'm going to, to give it. You went to the Hebrew. I'm going to give what it. What does it mean for brought forth? I'm going to give it. Thank you. Go I'm on. going to give it. Oh, do you want the Hebrew as well? Yes. Yeah, we'll pull up the Hebrew. But you first... what it means? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's pull up and the Hebrew. your claim. No, let's, let's pull it up and then let's look at it. Okay. Okay. There's no eternally coming No. If, ti if it's before creation, it's before time. We'll see. And if it's before time, then it's eternal. We'll see. Right. What verse are we in? Proverbs 8. Let's just pull it up. Proverbs 8. Do you want to get your Bible out, bro? Proverbs 8. When there were no... Right, so we're looking at 23 and 24. So, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, yeah, when there was, when there was no, when there was no, I was brought forth. So, here's the Hebrew, right? The Hebrew comes from, here we go, uh, it means to, to bear, to bring forth, to carve, to dance, to drive away, to fall grievously, fear, form, great, grievous, hope. Luke, make, be in pain, origin, or chill, kill, a primitive root properly to twist or to twirl a circular or spiral manner, specifically to dance, to writhe in pain. That's the Hebrew. And it comes from chul. Right? Now, where does, where, where is the sense of beginning in time come from that verse? Right? Now, that look, you Let just, me double check that. Listen, listen, listen. I was brought forth. Okay. Yeah, chul, yeah. Now, let me, let, let, do you see, do you see that the, the metaphor that we get from Proverbs 8 is that God is doing something akin to dancing. Okay, that, he is, that he is doing something that is within himself because creation isn't there. In this passage, in verse 24, it's talking about when there were no... Right, and that comes from the the verb, the um, sorry, it comes from the substantive particle of a negation, ayin, and ayin, as it from a primitive root meaning to be nothing, or not to exist, a non-entity, generally used as a negative particle. So, in other words, the passage is saying, listen, because I'm giving you a lesson in Hebrew here. I'm when it says, it listen, listen. Because I've spoken to Josh about these. Listen, listen. When there was no depths, so when there was nothing, I was brought forth. So in other words, before any kind of creation, the sun was begotten. If the sun was begotten before any kind of creation, that must include time, and therefore the sun is eternally begotten. That's what your passage says. So it's used. You're only just. Oh, it's used three times, and every time. It's What's the word? Uh, Chul. No, no. How? Uh, so you're, you're, I don't know. Which, 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 which? What? What? What are you reading? This is uh, a Hebrew interlinear. Hebrew interlinear of which word? Okay, let's go back. Right. I was brought forth. Yeah. I was brought forth. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Which means is how whatever how uh, how well Okay. So let's go to the meaning of it. Yeah. So I think you must have pressed the wrong. No, I didn't. Okay. So let's go. No, I didn't. Chill. It's not chill. No, I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. Right. We just need to make sure you're in verse 24. Yes. Right. How well Aleti. Look. Yours says how well Aleti. Mine says how well Aleti. Talking about the same word. Right. It comes from the part of speech. That I, uh, sorry, so, my mis so what I didn't make clear yeah. is I gave you the transliteration. Okay. So I used the word chul and that's the transliteration of the word hawalaleti. Right? So the way you pronounce it in the Hebrew apparently is chul. Okay? But what does it mean? It means 
a, or chill a primitive root properly to twist or to twirl. There's no sense of time there. But in the rest of verse 24, right, please come with me from your interlinear. Please come with me from your interlinear. The bit where, where it says, when there was nothing. Right? So that's right at the beginning. When there were no depths. Sorry, bro. One second. When it says, when there were no depths, the transliteration is ayin. Yes, ayin. Right? Okay, um, so it was used in Psalm no, 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 look, 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 understand context. So you didn't listen to anything no, no, listen, I said? listen, I'm just saying, listen to I'd like, I'd like you to respond to what I said. No, listen to the context. You're not going to do that. Fair no, enough. no, just Bob. Okay, okay, go on. The context Psalm is in prom. No, that's not the context. No, let's just see what you're saying makes sense. No, the context is in Proverbs 8. Go to Proverbs 8. That's Bob, the context. Bob. You just said, let's listen to it in context. The context is in Proverbs 8. Go back to Proverbs 8. Do? Don't do the Jehovah's no, no. Witness trick. Why do you keep saying these things? Because you're jump, jumping around the passage. Bob, there's a Hebrew word. We yeah. need to see how that same Hebrew word is used in other places. Do you not agree with that? No, we need to, see how, how we it, we need to see how it is used in its context. In its context, in other contexts as well. Let us look as it's used in its context in Proverbs Bob, 8. We, Come on, I don't know. If it's used in this context... You make your used. argument from yes. Psalms. It's irrelevant okay. to Proverbs 8, so but Psalm go on. Psalm 51, yeah. verse 5. Yeah. What does it say? Do you want me to get it up or do you want you, to... You, it's your point. You make it. I'm sticking with Proverbs 8 and I'm not shifting. You wanted to go to Proverbs 8. I'm not bridging from Proverbs 8. 5. You uh, get Psalm it. Psalm 51, 5. You get it. Well, this is not right. debate. This is about coming to truth. Why? What? No, it isn't, bro. You're here to score points. Really? Yes. Well, really? You're, you're not. You're, because... The, the passage is stating very clearly, well, why right? Why do you want to see what, how it's used in other contexts? Because we, no, no, in this context. Yes, and we have to use... We're talking about word. Proverbs 8. Why are you frightened of Proverbs 8? You were the one that went there. No problem. Right, well, let's stay there then. Okay, so I want to see... Go back to Proverbs 8. That word brought forth. Right. Let's see how it's used... Somewhere else. In the Bible. Yeah, why not? Why not? No. Let's see what's being said in Proverbs 8. You're, not, you, you, you're running... From the fact Where? That it's what gonna, am I running from? Proverbs 8? It's, it's going to expose you. No. Make your point, bro, because it's irrelevant to what we're saying. Go on. means to dance, yeah? Look, what it is... No, 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 no. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. What I said was, because you weren't listening, you were just looking for your next argument. What I said was, is that it, its origin is from chill, right? Which you pronounce keel, which is a primitive root properly to twist right or to twirl specifically to dance or to writhe what translation now it's usage right if you're looking at if you're looking for how it can be translated i'll tell you it can be translated in some contexts as tremble it can translate as i was brought forth it can be translated as i was wounded okay. it can be translated what, as what, what one do it you will fall violently so what do you choose, i choose it was brought forth okay so that's my point right but it was brought forth, one second, one second, the context in verse 24 of Proverbs 8 is in the context of nothing else, which is why, one second, which is why you ask me, why do I choose this? Because in the context of Proverbs 24, it's in the context of ayin. And ayin means, listen, it's from the origin, the primitive root, meaning to be nothing, or not exist a non-entity generally used as a negative particle it can be translated as no not and no and no one and no one without none and not and nothing and without and none and have no but no has no but no one now one second one second i'm not finished proverbs 28 says that the sun was brought forth in the context of nothing else. That means that there was no creation, which means that there was no time, which means that it is without beginning. So this is the context, the same word is used. In a different David, passage. David says, <laughs> Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me, or conceive me, meaning to be brought forth. Yeah. And what's that going to do with Proverbs 24? So my point is, there is no eternally being conceived or being brought forth. So explain it's, this then to me. It is, Go on. 
a contradiction. It's a paradox. So explain this to me. Explain There's to no eternity coming forth. You see, I don't need to throw contradictions into the Bible to defend myself. Okay. That's what you're doing. No, I'm not. I want you to explain to me how in verse... No, you haven't. No, I haven't. All you did is jump to another passage. In verse 24, it says that there was nothing, no depths, and I was brought forth. When it says that there was no depths yep. and I was brought forth, yep. when there were no strings abounding with water, no springs abounding with water, yeah. what is the sense that it is giving there? Say that again. Go on. So you weren't listening. Let's try again. So the passage is saying yeah. in verse 24, yeah, go on. It, that there is this context of nothingness. 100%, I agree. And then the sun was brought forth. 100%. Right? That confirms what Micah... 5-2 says. What does it mean? Are you saying that time existed at this point? I never said time existed. Right, so if there is no time, does that mean that we can talk of a beginning? Of what? Of, uh, in t so Micah says it like this. In the days of eternity, I was brought forth. Literally. In the days of eternity. So, in the, yeah, I know, it's, it's uh, I asked Josh about it. You know the Jewish guy. We don't care what the Jews say. Okay. Well, this is the, which the is language, it? Which passage? Micah. Five two. Micah five two. Let's go there. In most Bibles, it says from everlasting, which is a misleading translation. Everlasting days. What? 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 What to you does everlasting? Is that what you said? Micah five two. Yeah. yeah. Micah five two. But as for you, but no, uh, but as for you, Bethlehem Ephrath, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you, one will go forth from me to be a ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Now, let me ask you this question. When is the beginning point of an eternal day? So, there is a point of time. So, Alpha and Omega is time as we know it, beginning of creation. Prior to that point in time, how do you describe it? Right. So the answer to my question is, there is no beginning point to an eternal day. It doesn't have a beginning point. Wait, listen. It doesn't have a beginning point and it doesn't have an end point. So if Jesus is brought forth uh, from eternal days of old, then that means there's no starting point of him being brought forth. He is eternally begotten of the Father. So now let me ask you again. When is the beginning point of a beginning, an eternal day? That's my question. So Bob, this passage, I've done a lot of research on it. I've looked at the, the Hebrew lexicon and it means, it literally means a day in the distant past. I'm going to see if I can actually, because I'm sure I so, so my question was, when does an eternal day have a beginning? That's, that's the third time I've asked you now. When does an so eternal Bob, day have a beginning? Bob, Please answer that. Okay, so th listen to my point. How do you describe time before creation? There is no time before creation. And so you can't describe... Okay, so, no, no, you can't. Okay, you so can't when, describe when it as having when, a beginning. When were angels created? Uh, at a moment in time. When? Before or after creation? Um, when they were created. I don't know when they were Thank created. You. One second, one second, you one second. No, I haven't debunked okay. anything. Okay. All I have stated is that angels are created in a moment of time. Okay. So that is what I stated. So that does not contradict. So, but okay. now I've answered your question. Yeah, okay. answer I will it. insist that you answer, answer my it. question. I'm answer and I'm answering my question answer for the fourth it. time. No problem. When does an eternal day have a beginning? No problem. So this is what the Bible teaches. In Job, 38.7, Go on. It says the sons of God, which are angels, yeah, rejoiced at the foundations of the world being laid. So my point is, angels were there before creation. So that means they were created before creation. How do you describe that time? So they were created before the foundations of the world, yes. but when they were created, they had they were a created being. Okay, but so that before, doesn't mean one second. Time one second. One second. One second. One second. One second. Yeah. Thank you. You haven't answered my question. Okay, go Psalm 30. No, no, no. We're not. No, no, no. No. Because it's no. Scripture no. explains scripture. We're looking at Micah 5:2, yep. and I want you to answer my question. This is now the fifth time no I've asked you. That, I'll ask you that again. Talking about I'll ask you that again. About a time. When when does a, an eternal day have a beginning? You, answer that, please. So that is talking about a time before creation. Angels were created before creation. 
That's why they could rejoice at creation. So I'm asking you, Bob, when were angels created according to the Bible? Right. So you, you've not answered my question. I did answer it. Coming to like Micah, answer. coming like to answer. Micah, coming to Micah 5, uh, 5 verse 2. Yeah. Look, I just want to make sure that uh, I've got the, the, the right phrase. Well, it's not personal, okay. by the way, you know? No, bro, I, I know. I actually like you, you know? Yeah. I really do. That, and I, I like, like the you. work that you do. I like, I, I like the work that you do, and I, I wish you would become a Christian. You know, I, I want uh, you to become a Christian. You know I used to be Listen, where you were. usage of the word in the Hebrew. Always. Ancient time anymore. Continuance. Eternal. Everlasting. Long. Of old. Perpetual at any time. This is what I got. The, Compare. Got, right, listen. This is, this is what I was How can about. it be translated? Forever. Okay. Ever. Uh, Bob. Everlasting. Bob. Perpetual. Forevermore. Of the voice. And an everlasting. And an everlasting. Old, ancient, from everlasting. Ever. Never. Shall never. And ancient, from of old. So what we've got is the second passage that he goes to demonstrates no, that doesn't. Christ so, has an eternal uh, Bob, going forth Bob, from the Father the that is everlasting and eternal. Oh. I literally read the Hebrew to okay. you. So, uh, literally read the, the Hebrew to you. This is the exegesis. Oh, who's exegesis? Uh, who's a exegesis? A Hebrew linguist. Who's exegesis? This is not a Unitarian, by the way. No, this is a Hebrew linguist. Okay, read it. If you reject it, fine. No, no, problem. no, no. No problem. What, we've, what I've given you is what the word says. Okay, so this what is the word says. I want you to exegesis. deal with this point. This is the word, exegesis. the word means without beginning. Okay. The no. word means without beginning. What word? You see, you don't listen. You're what so word? busy interrupting. I'm not repeating myself. Alam. You should have listened. You should have listened. You should have listened. Oh, don't be you like should have listened. On. You should have listened. You were too busy interrupting. You too. No, 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 well, this is where you shouldn't interrupt. No, no. Then you, you, this is the problem with people: no, no. is they interrupt and interrupt and interrupt, and then when I don't jump through their hoops, they complain. No, 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 what no, no, I no. said to you, if you had been if bothered, you see, you're not you, listening no, no, now. No, no, so, no, ladies and gentlemen, no, no, no. what we saw in the Old Testament is that the second passage that he went to in Micah 5:2 states that the word describing the sun's going forth is from everlasting, no, no. and that can also be translated as forever. So my question to the Unitarian is a simple one. When is the beginning of forever? Okay, Bob. First of all, you didn't answer my question when it came to mercy, right? Two, you didn't answer my question, when were the angels created? So you're not going to answer this question then? Okay, I'm going to give you, I wanted to exegete what that verse says. So that was not my question. My question was, when does forever begin? Bob, your miss Represent what the text am I, is. Am I? Oh. Am I? So let's go. Let's wait, 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 wait. One second. One second. Yeah, Bob, what does it say in my... One second. Bob, you're one, than se this. one second. Let somebody execute you're, you're, you're complaining. And then you can... Look, you're disagree. interrupting constantly and then you're appealing you, to respect. You interrupt and I don't complain. Right, right. But that's the point. If, you, if you're going to interrupt me constantly, then all I do is do that. I warned you that this is how the conversation well, would well, go. Listen, I offered you to do it listen. time. As you say, Look, I'm not you're right? just, don't, You're not warning no, me. No, no. But as for elder, you, Bethlehem, so talk to me like, Ephraim, be respectful, Bob. try that, try be that, respectful. try that. I am respectful. Too little to be among the clans of Judah. Oh, oh, what, any from you, you I never one will like go forth for you me to be ruler in Israel. His going forth is from long ago. You, from the days of eternity. Okay, so now let's so go back to the Hebrew. So let's let's, the let's go back. Arguing. He's not a Christian. He's not a Christian. He's not a Christian. He's a Unitarian. He's not a Unitarian. No, no, no. I'll debate you about Islam. He's, 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 he's just creating a sideshow. He's just creating a sideshow. He's just creating a sideshow. Let's go back to the Hebrew. Let's go back to the Hebrew. Let's go back. So what it says, look, the term, the word. No, you don't get to. No, you don't get You said you've read this again. How many times do you want to read it? Because until you respond. Let me respond. Listen, listen. This is my response. Listen, listen. Bob, this is my response. Listen, listen. Bob, you want me to respond? Listen. You listen, you want to give me listen, listen. So what it says, it says Olam, right? Now the way that, that are you listening? You see, you're not listening again. So what that? No, listen, listen, listen. The usage of the word is always. It's eternal. It means any more continuance. It can be translated as forever, ever. Everlasting, perpetual, 
forevermore. Given that that is what the word means, I will ask you again. And this time I would like you to answer the question. Not ask another question. Ask answer the question. I'm going to exegete. When, does for, when is the beginning of forever? I'm going to exegete the text. So go on, answer According the question. To a Hebrew linguist. Okay. Right. So go on. Okay. Let, 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 to, let, let's hear the answer to the question. So it's exegeting this text. Okay. Who, who's exegeting? A Hebrew linguist. Who? Okay, I'll get you the source. Whether you reject it, that's fine. Fair enough. Okay. So it says, generally, also eternity, from men's viewpoint, could be included into the well-established concept of indistinctness. Because we humans cannot understand or simply imagine fully what can indicate, what indicates a time without a start and or an end. Nevertheless, there are other situations of indistinctiveness that are not linked with etern eternity necessarily. Right. So what's your, can we go? Can we see the website? What's the source of this website? You know, you know what Sorry. I oh, what I did, I am. Um, uh, yeah, screenshotted. Yeah, screenshotted, it, yeah. screenshotted. Uh, where, can you so, find it for me? No, yeah. I don't know which uh, one it is, bro. I think it was that one. Also, I think it no, was, no, no, not that was one. Was it not that one? Because there's a few. Right. Okay. Uh, but the point. No, Bob, uh, but the, the, just no, no. going while you find it. Let, I'll just, what you've quoted there. Right, it's just something that raises. Listen, Bob. No, no hold on one second. It. I'm just no, let, you. you see, you're not even listening to what I've got to say. I'm actually responding okay, on, to your quote, and you're still not listening. And this is my point. You can't appeal for respect if you're going to do that. Now, what you stated is you someone you claimed was a linguist. For all I know, that could just be a Jehovah's Witness website. But let's assume, let's assume that it is a linguist. All that the linguist has said. All the linguist stated. All the linguist stated. I was reading it. with you. Peace with. I'm all right, thank you. All the linguist stated. You didn't let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. No, let me finish. All the linguist stated there. You haven't let me finish. All the all the linguist stated there is a possibility, and and you're not doing that all the time. No, but don't complain then. I'm not complaining. But the point is, you can't blame. Go on. Go on. So you. But I won't. I'm just going to make this point. Go on. That all your linguist, if he is even a linguist, yeah, has stated anyway, all that all that has he, all that he has done is say that in some context it doesn't mean eternity. That doesn't mean in all contexts. No it doesn't mean in every context, no and it doesn't mean specifically okay. in this context. Finish it and then respond. Go on. Okay, thank you. There's a few more pages, anyway. Are we not doing pages, bro? No, there's only about three pages. Come We're on. not doing three pages. Went, oh, look how big the page is. Come on. We're not doing three pages, bro. It's one, two, and that's no, it. No, Come no, on. no. We're not doing three pages. Bob, do you want because, truth? It's about no, truth. I don't. What? Well, here's what I want. Here's what I want. Bob, do you really want truth? No, what I want, bro. Come what, on. No, bro. What I'm, I want is for you. I'm saying you're in error yeah, with uh, this passage. And I'm saying, bro, and you're I'm not a Christian. Bob, you can say what you want. Right? Day, and I want you to become a Christian. You're not my judge. Right? Yeah. Now, and remember. The same judgment that you judge remember, me, that judgment's going to be placed on me. Finish your quote from okay, this linguist. You. We're not doing three pages, though. Because okay. we're discussing. We're, we're, I'm I, responding you, to this passage. Right. You, does this passage. Sorry. Does this linguist. One second. Please. Does this linguist identify Micah 5 2 as the point he's talking about? So, you let me read it. And then you can respond. I don't know. No, I want you to answer that question. Does this? Yes, it will do. It will do. It will do. Yes. Right. Can, can we go you. to that bit then? Let's go to that bit. Okay. So. Um, Let's go to that bit. So to give context, because if I just go to no, bro, 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 listen. Bob, this is about truth. It's not about just a, a quick. No, this is about you trying to win an argument. No. It's not about truth for you. You believe you have the truth. You're in error. So you and believe, you're a, you're, you, believe you're, you have truth. I believe I have truth. Yes. So one of us have won. Yes. So in order for us to yes. establish who's wrong, right. let me make my claim, make my case. If you want to make your case and, and take one hour, but I would not, listen. Right. I promise you, but, I would listen. But you aren't responding to my point. So okay. come to the Thank bit. You. Come to the bit so that responds to what I've just said. Micah 5 2. Okay. Let's go to the mic a bit, please. Okay, so for example... No, so do you know what context, no? No, let's go to okay. mic a bit. We're oh, talking about oh, mic, so go to the mic okay. a bit. Okay, so then it goes... So, returning to Micah 5 1, Septuagint translates the Hebrew term, Olem, with that word. Yeah. That, strangely enough, has the same meaning for, one example, the epoch. Yeah. Mentioned in Matthew 24, yeah. 3 yeah. and 28, 20. Yeah. Had a start... Go on. And according... According to Jesus Christ, yep. will have an end also. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's the word that the Septuagint yes. translates it. This very same word. Do you accept the Septuagint? Of course, one hundred percent. Okay, fair enough. I just needed yes. to make sure. Yep. 
probably from Olem derived yep. a number of words that were utilized in the past. Yes. But we also are using some of these derivative words. Right. For example, Latin language had the uh, symbol. Uh, can, I, can I reply to no, that no, bit now? No, let me just see the last. Now, this, this is the bit. Go on. So, in view of the information above presented, the ruler cited by Micah had a time start. Right. We may understand so on the basis of the Masoretic verbal used the, to go out, to go forth, to spring up, and that implies necessarily a not, an action that starts on a given time point. That's right. So, so the Micah's ruler yep. must possess a beginning. Right. So now let me respond to that. So let me respond to that. No, 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 okay. no, no. I will no. get the source. This no is problem. a screenshot. Uh, of course. But I'm willing to give it you yeah. that he is a linguist, Thank you. right? Yeah. However, he is a linguist doesn't mean that he is the final authority on this. 100%. Do you not think that we Trinitarians have linguists? Do you not think that we Trinitarians have linguists who's looked at this passage? If we go to John, my point to you is yes. no. Trinitarian Allow me to reply. Allow me to reply. Allow me to reply. Now you have just said. The Christian linguists lie. Well, okay, now okay, I just John, John. now I just say that your linguist is lying. Okay, we'll now see. I just say your we'll linguist is lying. We'll now I just say your linguist is lying. Okay, and here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. That that your linguist, even at the very beginning of your quote, stated that this is a possibility, but it isn't necessarily in every case. And no, and then he makes the argument. He makes the argument. Yeah. That that is applied to Micah 5.2. Yeah. I simply disagree. Well, okay. I simply disagree. So you know disagree. better than the Hebrew linguist. No I, know, I know. So I asked Josh. I know. Though. I know. That, I know. I know. Okay, I know that Christians have linguists as well. Okay. Let's go and to I would John. be interested Let's to see to what a John Christian we'll see linguist says about the, this. The, the Trinitarians no, no, have lied on the book Because of now you have, now you, I want you to deal with my point. Okay, go ahead. The question that I asked. Yeah. The word yeah. in Micah, Micah 5.2 5, 2. Had a beginning Listen to Listen You will do better if you listen Go on, Bob. It says from the days of eternity That word there is talking about something that is forever Eternal Doesn't have a beginning So my question to you is a simple one When does forever Where is the beginning of forever? And I would like you to answer that are you going to answer that I question? I gave you the exegete. No, you didn't. Okay. You gave me a linguist's opinion. And opinions are like who, who, belly buttons. Who knows better than you, right? No, no, no. One second. Okay. One, we haven't even established okay, no, who's, who's granted, speaking. Granted. As far as I know, that could be a Jehovah's Witness no website. Okay. Okay. Right? You need to bring who he is. No problem. So right? Okay, and then so I'll bring so my linguist. Okay, so what and then what we'll establish okay, is okay. that opinions are like belly buttons among scholars. Everybody's got one, but you still have not actually answered my question. Okay. And my no question problem. for the last time before we move on, okay. my question for the last time is when is the beginning of forever? Okay. So based on the context. Where, where in this context? Show me. So, what I've just read to you. No, no, no. You read a linguist. Where in this context? In the days of eternity. Yes. The going forth. When do they have a beginning? Okay. So, um, that's why I asked you. When were angels created? Right. You can't answer it, can you? I, because I don't know when angels were created. They were created before. Were they created? created? Were they no. created? Angels weren't creation. Were what? they created? Angels are eternal. Is that what you're telling me? Right. No, one second. One second. So, let, you're, you're saying that Jesus Christ is created like the angels. Yeah, of course he's right. created, yes. So let's that's, what, that's what firstborn means. That's what uh, beginning of creation No, 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 firstborn does not mean that. It doesn't? No. Firstborn in the term of Colossians, okay. in the term of Colossians, doesn't firstborn... Mean doesn't mean yes, permanence. it does. No, it doesn't. It's, it's, it's okay. in the entirety I'll, of the context. I'll, I'll let's come to Colossians so then. Let me ask you this question, bro. Let's come to the Colossians. Can I ask you this question? Who was God's firstborn? Right, bro. No, no, can I ask you this question? Who no. was God's firstborn? Listen to me. No, no, Bob, I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Who was God's firstborn? Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. You're gonna, as long as you answer. Listen to me. Because I've asked you Listen over three, me. four questions that you haven't responded to. Listen to me. And yet you keep asking me questions. Because saying that I haven't responded to The reason I have. that you haven't, you've not answered a single well, question I've asked you. Because I don't need to ask, answer questions to someone who's not answering questions. Well, then fine. So, then. so you start answering questions and I'll start answering okay, so questions. So what did I not answer? Right, let's come to Colossians. The people no, can no, just no, review no, no, the no, video. No, we're not going there. I'm, no, asking, no. You, I'm asking you Let's come to Colossians. No, 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 no. Because no, you no, just no, lied no. about the Bible. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. I haven't. You said that firstborn is not about preeminence. 
That's what you think it, that it means. No, that's, again, you say I'm wrong. Yeah, you are wrong. So let's look no, no. at Colossians so me, in context. Can I ask you a question? No, well, no, one well, second. Let me ask you a question first. No, I'm no, going to read no, no, the passage. I want to ask you a question first. Right, do you want to do this timed? Bob, I want to ask you a Do you want to do this time? You, you, you come here and you don't... Go on, ask, ask your questions, questions and then I'll read Colossians. Thank you. Go on, ask your questions. Why question. does it have to be so hard, Bob? Because, really? because right. you're making it hard. No, I'm asking you a simple question. No, you're not. You, you're, <gasps> all you're doing is talking over me constantly, okay. so, interrupting, okay. not answering questions. I am. And, I am. and, and Bob, jumping down, from down. passage to Just passage. Bob, I see no one is upset. Bob, I love you. No one is upset. No one is upset. You know, I love the passion. Right, but you see, like, this, this, I offered you the timing and you should have took it. No, no, I don't want time. So ask your question and then I'll read Colossians. What's your question? Question. Who was God's firstborn? Right, so now let me read the passage. You're not answering. I'm going to. No, I will. To... I'm Who going was to. God's first right, creation? so the passage, no, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Bob, why don't you answer the question? He is the image of the invisible God, Bob. the firstborn Bob. of all creation. What does that mean? For by him all no. things by? were created. It doesn't, it doesn't say by. It doesn't say by. Please don't tap my Bible no. like that. Please don't no, tap my Bible. It doesn't say like by. That. Listen. Bob. Listen. Go. For by him go. all within, things. Within him were Bin. created Bob, go to the both in the heavens the and on the earth, visible the and invisible. Whether And this is the bit that demonstrates no, no. that firstborn is about preeminence. Because no, listen to the context. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things. Bob, in him... That. All things hold together. He is also the head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Okay. So the context of the passage is saying that Christ is the firstborn. But when you listen to what it means by firstborn, it's talking about in preeminence and how do we know that he is, he is because he is preeminent over all dominions and powers I agree, he, is he is preeminent over the church the he time... is preeminent amongst those Bob, who engage. have been raised engage. from engage. the dead Bob, and what we see ladies and gentlemen Bob, is that engage. others were raised from the dead before jesus christ but jesus christ is the first in Bob. preeminence over them Bob. Bob. Ladies Bob, and gentlemen, Bob, ladies and gentlemen, the point that I'm going to just speak to them because you're not listening. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob, the Unitarian is saying that this doesn't mean preeminence. The only no, way he can sustain that argument. He, no, he is, oh, he does. No, listen, oh, he does. Let me respond. Bob. Oh, he does. Bob, engage. Thank you. This is not the way to do a debate. Come on. Bro, stop you interrupting. Know, I do, and I do, then I do, you'll I do, get listen, better at listen, it. You'll get listen. more out of me when you stop I interrupting. I'm more civilized than you. Brilliant. You'll get more out of Come me on. when you stop interrupting. No, no, I'm not interrupting. You have constantly interrupted, Bob, bro. You're constantly. saying things. So you just say, So answer the question. So listen. So deal with the passage. Okay, Bob, I've made the case that it's about preeminence. So reply. Go on. So it says by him, yeah? Do you think it means by him? That's not the question. Okay. So what we're talking know, about Bob, is respond. the passage demonstrates Bob, Christ is preeminent. Respond. respond to that. Go on. Okay, let me respond. So Make your argument. In the Greek, it doesn't say by him. It's a mistranslation. It says in him. Are you aware of that? Deal with the argument no, I just made. You, you just read the whole passage. Deal with the argument then. And I'm going to deal with the whole right, passage. Deal with the argument. So are you aware it doesn't say by him in the Greek? Deal with the argument. I'm responding to your... Well, go on then. Okay, I'm asking you a question. Right, so, ladies and gentlemen... Yeah, you're not going to answer any question. I want you to deal with the quote argument I I've just am, made. So go for question. it. Go for it. Are you aware... Are you going to make your argument or not? I'm going to respond to the passage. Right, make your argument then. Okay, so are you aware... Go on. In the Greek, it doesn't say by him. Are you aware of that? Yes or no? Make your argument. I'm asking... Bob... I'm waiting for you to make no, your argument. No, I'm asking you a question. Right, I'll time you. Bob, no time, no. Because, Bob... Bob, I'm asking you. Don't, the reason why you want you don't want it timed because you don't want me to pin you down, and that's why I don't want it timed. I'm asking you a question, and you say make your point. How does that make sense? I'm asking you a question. Respond or just say you're not going to respond. Simple I'm not going to respond. That make your argument. So what's the point of dialoguing if you're not going to answer? My We've question? not been dialoguing at any point in this conversation. You have interrupted me continuously. Bob, you ignored my me. questions. You've and not you answered any my passages. questions as well. Right. So stop complaining and make your argument. I'm asking you a question. You're not going to... Are you going to make your argument? I'm asking you a question. You're not going to answer them. Correct. Now make your argument. So what's the point in us? So make your argument. Okay. So who from was the, the passage? So who was God's firstborn? Make your argument. Okay. 
So in, in the Old Testament, yeah, there are about 132 times firstborn is used. Right, go on. Yeah? 132 times. Yeah. What's your understanding of the term firstborn in the Old right. Testament? Right. So once again, yeah. my Unitarian friend has jumped away no, from the passage. No, no, no. I've made an argument from the passage. No, what's the argument you made? And what the passage okay, what's the argument? actually what do you want states. What about the part what argument actually to? states? And notice he's interrupting no, what do you want continuously. To the passage clearly demonstrates that firstborn is about preeminence. And how do we know that it's about preeminence? By reading the passage in full. What does it say? It says that Christ is the head over every dominion and power. Christ is the head of the church. That he is the firstborn of the dead. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these examples from the passage are about priority, about headship, about preeminence. And in the Roman world, ladies and gentlemen, the idea of firstborn was a legal term. If you didn't like your genetically firstborn son, you would reject them and you would adopt a son and you would declare him your firstborn meaning that he would inherit all that was yours, ladies and gentlemen. And the epistles are using that term. And my friend, he has ignored the argument and he hasn't responded. So now let's give him a chance to respond the argument. Would you like to respond to the argument? I've made it again. Okay, so Bob, you've just read a passage yep. and I want to dissect the passage. Right, okay. so respond to the argument, go on. Okay. I'm listening. So your argument saying that this means he's preeminent. Yes. I agree. The first Great, born, fantastic. By the fact that you are the firstborn, you are the preeminent one, right? We agree with that. Right. But my point is, Jesus was the firstborn over all creation, which contextually means, which contextually means he was the first that was brought forth. Yeah. So listen, my point is... Go on, finish your point. Contextually, firstborn in the first century had a meaning. Yes. Okay. And in the first century, Philo used that word. Yes. And he used firstborn meaning God's first creation, the heavenly Adam. Go on. Now you want to divorce the first century context. You want to divorce the first, ten the first century context of the words used and its meaning. Bear with me one second. Could someone bring, could maybe someone bring Victor over here and just get him to calm down for a minute? That'll turn into a confrontation. Could someone maybe just encourage him to come away and come and stand with us? I just don't want Victor to get, yeah, he, no he's been assaulted in the past. Yeah, I know, I know. Go on. Okay, so what I'm saying is, yeah. you cannot divorce the words that have meaning yes. in the first century Correct. away from the context. Right, can I reply to that? Okay, right, so, Right, we have. We, wait, wait, no, but no, here you go. I literally, I literally, right, I listen to what you've just said, and you can't let me speak without interrupting. That's why this conversation. Is, there you go. You don't. There we go. You're interrupting again. So, ladies and gentlemen, because I know he's going to interrupt me, I'll just speak to you. So, the passage we have agreed is to saying that Christ is preeminent. No problem. But his argument is that he's preeminent because he's the firstborn. But this is a circular logic. If he is preeminent because he is the firstborn, then that means that we are interpreting firstborn by his preeminence. So that means that what the passage is saying when it says he is firstborn is he is preeminent. Now the reality is when it says that he is firstborn, it is talking about his preeminence over all creation. It's using a legal term. Now the term firstborn is used in scripture many places. Israel is described as God's firstborn by adoption. Adam can be described as God's firstborn by creation. But Christ is described as God's firstborn by preeminence. Why? Why? Because when you look at the passage, it says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now notice he's interrupting again. Notice he's interrupting again. Both in heaven and on earth. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. simple question. Right. Is time a created thing? I'd like you to answer that. Bob, Bob, Is Bob. time created? Bob, calm down. Calm down. Answer that question. Bob, calm down. I'm so answer my question. Answer the question. I'm going to engage you and you're going to bury yourself. Do you know why? So answer that okay. question. So it says in the same verse, God, uh, Jesus is going to re reconcile all things unto him. Do you believe Satan's going to be reconciled? So did you see him answer the question? No, no, I'm going to answer it. I'm answering. I'm going to answer it. So I'll ask Bob. you again. Okay. So one, let is me... time created? Bob, let me just make my point and then you'll understand. Right, you make a point, okay. but don't ask questions because I'm not interested in your so questions. Why do you keep anymore? asking me questions? I can't ask you. Well, because you don't answer them and you ask You don't them. answer either. Right, so let's just not do, do questions. I do answer. Just make your point. Okay. So first of all, the word all in Greek is tapanta, yeah, which always and almost in every time has Will, Will, just go. Will, Will. Yeah. Has, has uh, contextual exceptions. Let me give you an example. Go to Luke chapter 2. You go to Luke chapter 2. Okay. Let me give you a few examples when all doesn't mean all. Doesn't mean all. But the question is, does it mean in this passage okay. all? So, Not in another okay. passage, so even, in this okay. passage, no problem, does it mean okay. all? We'll see. We'll see. By going to some other passage? I'm saying that... No, way. in this passage, oh. does it mean no, all? Listen, I'm saying con contextually, Tapanta always has contextual exceptions. Does it have a contextual exception in this passage? By the fact that he's called the firstborn, yes. What does firstborn mean? He is God's first creation. No, it means in preeminence. No, it doesn't. Because if you read in the Old Testament... I no, say, you're jumping around okay. the passage. So let me, no, let Over the passage in front of us. you genuinely engage... Yeah. Bro, you haven't, genuinely engaged. You, you haven't genuinely engaged at any point. Okay. I'm not interested in your complaints. When you genuinely engage, you'll get more out of me. No, no, no. Very disappointed. Very disappointed. Mari and divorce. <laughs> right. Who are you? Yeah, who are you? You are calling me man. Who are you? So the word panta, let's just be clear about what the word panta means. Panta, top panta. Right? Okay. Listen, listen, listen. You don't, you, listen. You want me to respond and then now you, you keep talking. Right. I was, Let me respond. Re respond to the Colossians then. Go on. Okay. So I'm responding. So, Answer the question. Don't do the foolish you are. A slave. A slave. Why do you speak Arabic language? You. You are forced to speak Arabic language. Are you not? Guys, we're going to go over that way. Come on, bro. Right. So basically, yeah. Yeah. If you read um, Psalms 89, so it, t it talks about David being made the uh, firstborn. I'm not moving out of Colossians. Okay, no, I'm not. So then, this, listen, Bob. Scripture explains Scripture. Okay. And so sometimes you've got to look at how the wider context of how Scripture uses terminology. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you're just going to try and be dogmatic and say, you know, it says all, so it literally means all. No. The Bible doesn't but work but like do that. you recognise that how a word is used in one context? And in one passage does not necessarily mean that it is used in the same way in every passage. So this is the point. Jumping to another passage doesn't define how a word is used in another passage. So stop jumping to another passage, deal with Colossians. Go on. Whether you accept it, fine, no problem. So in terms of Psalms 89, it says this, talking about David. We're not talking about Psalms 89, we're talking about Colossians 115. 116, sorry. Where when, when you're not the literal firstborn, how the Bible uses firstborn? Again, we're not talking about so, Psalms, no, we're talking we're about talking Colossians. About the linguist, the language. Right, so well, I've got the language here. Look, I can so give listen, it to you. Listen to my point. Yeah, go on. And then, you and then I'll reply. Okay. Yeah. So every time I try to make a point, you try and sh you shoot it down. Yeah, every time I try to speak, you interrupt me. I keep no, telling you, you when you do. Me at all. Right, exactly. Yeah, so exactly, so, so, so my point complain. is. I'm not the one, you're the one that's You literally just complained. No, I'm just saying, you don't, you, let literally me make, just you don't let me make my point. Uh, that's complaining. Yeah, but 
You just. Wait, you, you interrupt me continuously. You refuse. No, no, you refuse to answer Do you want to do this timed? No, no, you refuse to answer right, questions, right. but you want me to answer questions. No, 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 you don't answer questions, so I, I do, don't answer questions. But I don't answer them in the way that you right. want me so to. so make your point, bro. Okay. Stop whinging, just Thank make you. your point. Okay, so in Psalms 89, do you want to go there or you don't want to go there? No, because we're talking about Colossians. Okay. So no problem. So it says this, talking about David. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, the rock of my salvation. Yep. Also, I will make him my firstborn. Yep. Make him so... By adoption. So... Yep. I said Essentially, that. Essentially, if somebody's not your literal firstborn, the context would be Jesus would be made firstborn. But it doesn't say that there. It says he is the firstborn. So in every other context where somebody is the firstborn, yep. it literally means they are the first created in every context of the Old Testament and the New Testament, by the way. But so Can I, I reply? That's God. point number yeah. one. Point number two, Tapanta always has contextual exceptions even yes. for example with God all things are possible God cannot lie yeah God cannot be tempted do you agree God cannot be tempted make no, your no, point Bob, do you agree that God no. cannot be tempted you don't answer my questions no, Bob, you don't do get you to... believe God cannot be tempted right Simply... are you, is that you finished making no, no, your point I'm, I'm asking you make um, your point no this is why I don't like time because you don't want to answer questions are you done do you believe Jesus was tempted? Okay, right, I'm no, going to reply now. No, 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 to that point. No. God cannot be tempted. No, you don't but answer Jesus any of my questions. Jesus was always tempted as we right. are. Right, so now so I'm, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reply. Okay, so no, ladies no, I'm going to respond to this. I'm gonna respond no, to no, right, ladies and gentlemen, he quoted another passage, to show you how to but the point you is, words sit the in the context of the passage yep. that they're in. Okay. And you must understand them in their actual context not running to another passage that uses the word in a different context. And that's the game that he's playing. And he's been trying to play it throughout this entire debate. Whenever we pin him to what the word means in the context of the passage that he wants to go to, he does the Jehovah's Witness trick Bob, of it. jumping to another passage okay, Bob, where the same word Bob, is used in a different mean? context. Bob, this is not how you die Let us people. look at what the passage says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. It means this, okay? And the phonetic spelling is pass, the transliteration is pass. And what it means is this, all, the whole, every kind of. It means including all the forms of declension. That means any kind of discretion or any kind of difference. It's apparently a, a, a primary word, meaning all, any, every, the whole. Its usage in the Greek New Testament is this. All, always, any, daily, ever, every, as many as, no other thing thoroughly whatsoever whole whosoever it is all inclusive so when it says in colossians chapter 1 verses 16 that christ is the one through whom all things are in heaven and on earth are created it means everything you can think of so now the question that he has avoided let me ask him again did Christ also create time? Okay, so Bob, That's the question. No. Did you all hear no, no. it? Now let's see if he answers no, no, the no, question. No, no. And he won't. No, no, Bob. Okay. You just said, you just made a fallacy. You just said something that's not true. You said all means everything that, you, that comes to your mind. Did you say that? Yes or no? So what? The no, no, no. Do you, is, that, is that what you're going by? Look, look, it says here, translated no, 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 as no, Bob, all, all Bob, things, every, you you just said. everyone, Don't, of no, no, no. all, Bob, to all, Bob. everything, any, okay, to Bob. everyone, than Bob. all, of every, anyone, Bob. amongst all, for all, Bob. in all. Bob. How much clearer do you Bob, want you it know, to be? Okay, so you believe that means everything that can come to your mind, yes? Yes. Okay, so read verse 20. Okay, let's Colossians go to verse 20. 20. Let's go to verse 20. Let's see if he's consistent. Right? So, in verse 20, bear with me, I need the light. Right? And through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross through him. Okay, Bob, right. do you think the devil is going to be reconciled? Yes or no? Right, the let me answer the question. Because all things that come Are you to listening? Mind. Okay, see if he's consistent. Are you listening? Go on. 
listen to the, the how it's phrased, right? All things to him shall be reconciled to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Does Satan accept the blood of the cross? No. But all those that accept the blood no, of the no, cross no, no, no. are Listen, reconciled. You, said all things you see, that come to your mind. what don't I have it. said is consistent. Well, dialogue, dialogue. I have said that all has to be understood in the you know, context well, of the passage dialogue. that Thank it you. is used. Thank you. Thank and you. therefore, yeah. what you have is a distinction between the all in verse 20 and the all, sorry, the all in verse 24, I think it was, sorry, the all in verse 20 and the all in verse 16. Okay. The problem with my friend oh. is he just wants to play a semantic game oh, the one that's of semantic jumping game. around verses and trying to ignore the passage. Well, He's already admitted that what we've got is a passage that says he is the firstborn in preeminence. Yes. And then what he's saying is, because he is firstborn, he is preeminent. But the context is saying he's preeminent over creation. Yes. And so it's talking about his firstborn in terms of his uh, preeminence over creation. And he talks about through him all things are created, or in him. I'm Thank happy you. with Thank both you. translations. Not by, not by. I am happy not with by. I'm happy with all translations of that. Not I'm by. happy with all translations. No, Fine, you reject. But I'm happy to go not with, with the Greek. With I'm, the Greek. I'm, I'm happy to go with in him. But Thank the you. point is if all things are created in him, that means time. And that which is outside of time does not have a beginning. So He's not going to address my point. He's not going to answer my question. But that's the point that you should take away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bob, right? Bob, do you not want a dialogue? Seriously. Right, so respond no, to no, my no, point then. Bob, no, this is very poor. Respond to my point then. I've never debated somebody who behaves like this, seriously. You can complain all you like. No, this is not how to dialogue. Bro, bro, I'm not interested in your lectures. You interrupted me continuously. You don't engage with the points that are being made and you don't answer the questions. So I'm not interested in any lecture that you've got to give well, about no, manners. I'm really disappointed. Answer the question. I'm really disappointed in you. Right, seriously. so raise the point. No, no, answer really the point. Di let's dialogue. Well, try that, no, bro. Don't talk to the crowd. Try like that, me. because whenever I You're talk to you, then no, whenever I talk have to I him, ever, he interrupts. That's why I'm crowd? talking to you. Have I ever talked to the crowd? Have I spoke without you interrupting me? Have, say that again. Say that again. You see, you don't listen. No, say that again. I'm you listening. You don't listen. Bob, I'm listening. You don't listen, bro. So you can't complain. Bob, now, you don't listen as well. Stop whinging. I've made a point. Okay. Address the point. Okay. So here's my point. Address the Firstborn point. Firstborn means the first creation. First created. Where does it say created here? That's what firstborn means. No, where does it say created firstborn here? Firstborn means in its historical context. Wait, the Jews where does it say created Bob, here? I'm saying in its historical context, the firstborn meant first God's first creation. No. That's why I right. asked you. Look, look, look. Bob, look, look, Bob, look, right. Bob, in the first century, right. let me ask you this question. One Let's second. deal with this context. One second. Let's deal with this context. No, 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 no. You're saying he's firstborn of all creation, right? But then it says that in him everything is created. Yes. How can he be both created and the thing that all things are created in? Yes. It doesn't make sense. Yes. Bob, go to uh, Genesis 2.5. No, we're sticking to no. Colossians. Okay, then you'll understand why. You go to Genesis. I'm sticking with Colossians. So this is my point, Bob. The this is a Jehovah's Witness trick, bro. It's no, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I know you're not, but you're you're debating like a Jehovah's Witness. Bob, and you're not you're. Were well, you ever a Jehovah's? Just out of interest. Were you ever? Not, never. I, I mean, I don't know. I was a I'm Trinitarian. Asking. Right. Yeah, and I used. I believe to, you. I believe you. I believe and you. And I used to defend the Trinity. Yeah. I used to argue against the Jehovah Witnesses. I believe you. So I know every single concept, every single reason why you believe in the Trinity, and if you're willing to dialogue, let, let me make one point, and if you're willing to use the same intellectual honesty that we want Muslims to, to use, I guarantee you, you know, you're not going to admit it in front of these cameras, um, but listen. Trust me, that listen, is not my listen, motivation. Bob, I will take you to a meal, for a meal, for a restaurant, and listen, happily, happily. We, we will dialogue all these pictures, because I'm getting when, nowhere. When, when are you responding listen, to what I said? Bob, we will go through every single... When passage. are you responding okay. to what I said? So I'm, I'm responding. I'm, right, I'm, go on then. I'm telling you what this passage means. I'm waiting. In its historical... So far, all, in its all, you're doing, all you're doing is in lecturing its, me. In its historical context. Right, You've respond to what I said. Whole point, Wait, anyway, respond. The point I'm trying to make is, the term firstborn had a historical context. And so, 
when they were using firstborn, in the first century, they would have understood it that Jesus was the first creator. It even says in... No, I disagree. Okay, well, go look at, go look at contemporary, go look at uh, Philo. Go read no, Tertullian. No, hold go on. Read Tertullian agrees with me. He doesn't. Yes, he does. Yeah. However... No, he doesn't. He does. So, okay, so, no, I'll prove you wrong. Hold on one second. No, I'll prove you wrong. Hold on one second. I'll prove you wrong. No, coming back to well, this passage. You keep lying, listen. Bob. You see, here you I am want, trying to talk. You honesty. Here, here, I, am, here I am trying to talk, and once again you interrupt me. Tertullian so at this you, point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop talking to you, and I'm now going to speak to the crowd. Bob, Bob, so, ladies Bob. and gentlemen, no, no, I, listen, what okay, we saw, what we saw, ladies and gentlemen, is that it says in Scripture that he is the firstborn of all creation. And my friend wants to say that firstborn here means that Christ was created. But listen to what the very next sentence says. And we'll use his translation. For in him all things were created. It doesn't say all other things. It says all things. That means that Christ cannot be one and at the same time both created and the creator of all things. He is either part of creation or he is not. Clearly, what is being spoken about in the full context of the passage is the preeminence of Christ. And we see that. Why? Look at the context of what it says. Because it goes on to say that by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the concept of firstborn in the Roman world was this idea of a legal status. Now, notice he's interrupting. Now, notice he's interrupting. He complains about him wanting a dialogue, but this is how he behaves. Would you so, if you lie when it Julian? says, ladies and gentlemen, Tell me when, when it here. says, ladies and gentlemen, that Christ is the firstborn, that term is a term we understand from Roman antiquity. It's a legal term. If your child was a disobedient son, a wastrel, a child that was not worthy of inheriting all your things, a Roman citizen would just adopt another child and declare them his firstborn. Meaning that that firstborn would inherit everything from the father and the wastrel son would inherit nothing. This is the sense that it is being spoken of of Christ. That he is the firstborn of all creation that he will inherit because his humanity is created, okay. all things, and that he is the head of the new creation that he inaugurates. There's no sense in this passage that Jesus was created. And the only way that he can try to establish that is to run to another passage where the word is used differently in a different context. Now you can reply to what I've said. So you said Tertullian agrees with you, yeah? Okay. Yeah. So this is um, the Catholic Encyclopedia. Yep. Yeah. It says, comments that for Tertullian, there was a time when there was no son and no sin, when God was neither father nor judge. I can get all these... Ex I can get okay. He believed that Jesus had a beginning. So do you apologise to the camera for lying that Tertullian agrees with you? Yes or no? So, here's the thing, right? Tertullian writes multiple books. No, I've got, I've read it. No, let's see. Now notice he's interrupting. He agrees with me because you're He lying. asks a question, and then when I try to reply, to me. he interrupts talk completely. To me, talk to and me. And the reason why I don't talk to him is because when I try to talk to him, he interrupts. Ladies and gentlemen, Tertullian is an author that has wrote many, many books. And the reality is, there is a discussion by scholars what Tertullian taught. There are scholars that agree with me that Tertullian taught the Trinity. That's my opinion. There are some scholars that argue differently. The reality is, quoting a single sentence out of the encyclopedia, the Catholic encyclopedia, does not settle the argument about what Tertullian believed. Peace with you. Sorry?
God bless you, sister. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So, what, what would you like to reply? Okay, so Tertullian is 100% non-ambiguous. There was a time there was not a son. He was God's first creation. Creation. It doesn't. I don't believe he teaches that. Okay, so if I prove that to you, then what? Well, all the even if, right? Let's just to do a thought experiment. Okay. Even if you prove to me that Tertullian believes something that's heretical, okay. all that you would have established by doing Where that... Where did you get that from? All that you see, you're interrupting again. All that you would have established is that Tertullian is a heretic. But you lied then. What you would not have proven is that I lied you because... Went, you said on camera because, that he agreed you see, with you're you. interrupting, so I'll just speak to the crowd yes, again. The so, ladies and gentlemen, if he proved that Tertullian taught something that I don't believe Tertullian taught, it would prove two things. One... I don't know Tertullian as well as I think I do. And two, that he was right about Tertullian and the conclusion of that would be Tertullian is a heretic and he's not an authority for me on the debate. It does not prove that I lied. Because to lie means you actually believe one thing and then tell a lie about it. That's the point. He's not thinking. Right, would you like to reply to that? that Tertullian didn't agree with me. That's what I believe. I don't yeah, believe Tertullian no, agrees agree. with you. I no, don't. you did. You did earlier in this debate. You did. And that's why I say, you know, you're lying. So, what, what, so, so. Because earlier you said, okay, I do give it to you. So. Tertullian, but believe. Because it's a red herring. It's so not then, important. Then why, then why, in front of the camera, say that Tertullian agrees with you. Are you accusing me of lying? When earlier. Are you accusing debate, me of lying? Earlier in this in debate, this debate, you said, okay. So this is about an ad hominem. Have we stopped talking about the topic? But what I'm saying, you, you're, you're being disingenuous. No, ad hominems don't win arguments. Deal with the topic. Okay, so all the way through this debate, all the way through this debate, everything, okay, everything, go on. Go on. Everything. Tell me. everything, 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 because I've laid out the passage very clearly, okay, go on. very clearly, and I've given you my right? And you haven't. All you've done is jump to another passage. Okay. You've so never dealt what with this, this is passage. Saying, this is saying, so what I'll what stay, I'll lay out my argument again. I'll lay out my argument with you again. I'll lay out my argument with you again. Clearly, the idea of the firstborn, yeah. right? The idea of the firstborn, right? And again, notice he's not listening. He's just started talking to someone else. Yeah, because you talk to them. Right? So, the so ladies and gentlemen, and this is why I've started talking yeah, talk to you, to when because ready, whenever I try back, to talk to him, back, he interrupts me, like and then he just interrupts them, me, like and then starts talking to someone else. I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, all that he's done in this argument is complain because I've mirrored his own conduct. And because he interrupts constantly, doesn't listen to an argument, doesn't engage with an argument, and that has forced me to speak to you. This passage is talking about Christ being the firstborn. So let us understand the sense that he is the firstborn. He is the sense that he is the firstborn over all creation because he is the one in whom all things have been created. How can you say that that is not God if you are the creator of all things? And all things has to include time, which means that it doesn't have a beginning and it doesn't have an end. But also, Christ is the firstborn of a new creation because he is the firstborn of the church. He is the head of the church. Now, obviously, obviously, this is talking about rank that he is the head of the body that it is church. And that means this is the sense that firstborn is being used. It also says that he is the firstborn of the dead. Now Christ truly was the firstborn to be resurrected. And from that he inaugurates a new creation that he is the head of. But was he the first person to be raised from the dead? Wasn't Lazarus raised from the dead? Wasn't there Old Testament people raised from the dead? So clearly, it's not using firstborn chronologically. It's talking about firstborn in terms of importance. Christ was not the first to be raised from the dead. He was the first to be resurrected. And, but as firstborn of the dead, he was the most important. So Bob, Go on, you can reply. So you're saying in this passage, it's saying that Jesus is the creator. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So go back to your Proverbs 8, yeah, that you love so much, and go to verse 27. 
Right, so I'm going to reply to that comment. Yeah, so he was the one that took us to Proverbs 8, yep. and now he's saying that Proverbs no, 8 that you said, like so much, you said that he was the and the reason why he wanted to run away from Proverbs 8 is because he got stuck on it. I didn't. Right, where would you like to go to in Proverbs, Proverbs 8, 8? verse 27. Okay, let's go to Proverbs 8, verse 27. Would you like to make your point about Proverbs 8, no, 27 really before I speak? And Okay, so you don't want to have an opportunity to comment on it? No, you can read it, Bob. But I'm talking about the commentary. Would you like to then comment on it? Comment on what? No, read it and tell me what you what you understand. Okay, of it. so he's asking me to say what I think because, okay, about Proverbs you said 28. Jesus was the creator. Right, are you listening? Because you asked for my commentary. Okay, you said Jesus was Proverbs the creator. 8, verse 28. When he made... Sorry, verse 27. When he established the heavens, I was there. Okay, stop. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he asked for my commentary. Let me give it to you. As a Trinitarian, we believe that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they all act as one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit create together. It's not that the Father creates and the Son doesn't Bob, create, Bob, or the text. Son creates no, no, no. and the Holy Spirit doesn't no, create. It is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that create. Bob. And notice again, Bob. he asked me for my commentary on the passage, so and he's again. attempting to interrupt, read it again. Read it again. which is why I'm speaking read it again. to you. Read it again. Ladies and gentlemen, how do we understand this? Bob, okay, no, there are verses slowly, in slowly. the Bible that say the Father is the Creator. There are verses in the Bible that they say the Son is creator, no, like okay, Colossians no, it chapter 1. It doesn't. And there are verses in the Bible that say the Holy Spirit is the creator, okay, Bob, the giver of Bob, life. Bob, again, you've lied. And then we take all of these passages Bob, together again. and we believe in them okay. together. Show me so what would you like to, what, what would you like to? It says, when he created the heavens, I was Either there. use your own Bible or okay. I'll hold it for you. So verse 27, yeah? Verse 27, it's down here. Yeah, 27. When he established the heavens, I was, I was there. there, yes. Who established the heavens? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so Bob, show me one passage. Yeah. Show me from Colossians that says Jesus is the creator. Yeah, I'll show you. Okay. All right. So he wants me to show you from Colossians where Jesus is the creator. Yeah. Right? He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in both in the heavens and on earth. In him, yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if Christ, in him all things are created, is it right to call him creator? In him. Yes. Now let's go to John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yeah. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Does that sound like Jesus is the creator? Bob, you're never yes. going to come to truth if this is how you're going to debate. So listen, I would I'm invite you, a meal on me. Would how would you like to respond to the point? Okay, so John 1 verse 1, yeah? I've shown you two passages okay, so where Jesus me, is the creator. Point, let me make point. No, no, don't complain. John 1, 1, don't you, complain. You just told me to respond. Right, so respond. Okay, so John 1, 1. Yep. You understand what the Greek says, yeah? Yes. Okay. You understand there's no definite article? Yes. Okay. So, when, an, when um, a noun is pertaining to a person, let me just make my point. When a noun is pertain, pertaining to a person, it's either definite or indefinite, right? We agree with that. 100%, yeah? I'm waiting for you to make your point, go on. Yes or no, are you aware of that in the Greek? I'm waiting for you to make your point. Bob, I'm asking you a question. If you're not going to, you know what, we'll forget the cameras and we'll go and I'll buy you a What's milk. the point you want to make, Rob? I'm asking you a question. So make your in point. In the Greek, when a noun is pertaining to a person, it's either definite or indefinite. Do you know, are you aware of that, yes or no? Okay, make your point. I'm asking you yes or no. Make your point. Bob, I'm asking you a question, I'm not making a point. The reason why you can't answer this because you know what? You don't want truth. No. 
you, you, you are just doing your Trinitarian script. You talk about the, the Muslim script. Right. All you're doing is going the over passage the script, that I actually went don't to. Don't want to answer the question. No, the passage that I actually right. went to was John one verse three. No, you went one which one. Into, no, listen. You didn't did you not, listen. Did, you not quote one did I not quote the bit where it says all things were made by him? And did I not say that that describes him as creator? Oh, you him. see, he was through not him. listening. Through him. Through him. Through and him. listen to what the Greek says. Pante di auto egnito kai koris auto engenito. What does that mean? It means all things through him came into being, and without him came into being not even one thing. That's what the Greek means. So let me ask you this: According to the Bible, by not answering any questions, did the Bible, according to the Bible, did Jesus create you? Answer that question. Bob, I asked you a question. And now you're asking me a question. Yeah, just to prove Bob, you're not going to answer my question. Bob, I asked you a question. You right. went, Bob, you went to John 1. No, I went to 1, John 1, 3. Read, I read in context from John exactly. 1. So John 1, 1 so comes before John, John 3, right? 3 is so the point. So we don't go to John 3, we go to John right. 1 first. So let's just say I made a mistake. I should have gone straight to John 1, 3. Oh. I've owned my mistake. Now answer the point that I actually no. made. So Bob. No, answer the point I actually you went made. To John 1, 1. I've just said that was a mistake. I should have gone no, John well, 1 3. I want to deal with John 1 1. No, but I'm going to John 1 Bob. 3, deal with the passage. Bob. All things through him came into being, and without him came Bob. into being not even Bob. one Bob. thing. Bob. So answer that question. Bob. Answer the question. Is yes. Jesus being you described as the creator? Because you know, oh dear, you're crying yes, so much, bro, that's why you're not answering questions. Just whinging, deal if with the point. If you were in a restaurant, you would answer my question. Deal with the point. But because you're on camera, deal with the point. your pride won't allow you just to be humble. And okay. I'm asking you a simple Ad question. Ad hominems don't win arguments, okay, so deal asking, with the point. I've asked you a question, why don't you answer it? Ad hominems don't win points, okay. answer the point. Bob, I'm asking you a question. The reason why I do not answer your questions is because when I've asked you questions throughout this entire answer debate, you have not answered the question. No, and you another, answered some no, other question. No, I went to another no, passage. Because at no point did I ask you to go and give me the definition of a word. Bob. I asked you things like, when does eternity have a beginning? What is the beginning of forever? Okay. These are the kinds of questions I asked you, I and you never I answered okay. those I'm questions. Gonna, I'm gonna answer again. And okay. so once again, Bob, I'm gonna answer, I'm and gonna once again, you. And Proverbs. once again, okay, you're one. avoiding the point Proverbs. that I've made. First point the point that I've made is Panta di auto en genito, kai coris auto en genito, aude genho gegon, gegonon, so, genonon. Some Greek so person's going to pull me up there. Point so number one. Okay, in Bob. 1 3, Christ is described that through him all things were made. Okay, is it fair to describe him as the creator? No. Okay, so, Why? Okay, so. Point one, Proverbs, I didn't answer you. No, 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 no. why, is, why just, can we not describe him as creator? I'm going to give you... Okay, bro, this conversation stopped being a conversation a long you know time what? ago. Well, right? Because if you don't you, like my answers. You, no, because you, you, all I you do is complain. You, I answered you with Proverbs. All, you do, all you're you doing is complaining. At hominems, don't win arguments. Deal with the point that I made. One, okay. John 1, verse 3. Okay. Christ is described as a creator. Why don't you you've said, with John 1, 1? You've said, you've why said, you John 1, 1? you've said, you've said, that this passage doesn't describe Christ as no. the creator. I would like you to explain no. why. Okay, so Go on. through, it's always, Jesus is always seen in creation in a passive sense, not in an active sense. Right, okay. go, on. go on. So all the verbs used for Jesus are always in a passive sense. Go on. You will see very something similar in Genesis 2, 5, okay, where it literally says that um, God did not bring about any shrubberies or trees yep. because there was no man to till yep. the earth. So Again, you're jumping to a different no, I'm verse. I'm just trying to explain. Let me just go. stick with this verse. And I'm explaining why. So go on. I've get, listen, I said all the verbs yep. used about Jesus in creation are all passive verbs. And I gave an example that Genesis chapter 2 verse 5 has the same implication. Okay, answer this okay. question. So Does that, the that, Father no, no, no. create through so the Son? Have I answered the question? Yes or no? Um, no, because we're talking about John th okay. 1, 3. So he uses the word through, not yeah. by. Okay. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. Was, I'm not disputing okay. that. So I haven't disputed say, that. If Jesus was part of the active, was uh, part of active creation, yeah. it would use the verbs like No, no, no. Him. Hold on okay, one so second. Let me make my point. My, my question to you is a simple one, and we're going to demonstrate again you don't answer questions. Okay, do, but you don't Does answer. the Father create through the Son? Yes. Right. So if the Father creates through the Son, yes. then the Son is also the Creator. In some sense, yeah, in a passage. There you go, in some senses. No, listen, Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. Doesn't come from, from, Thank you very much. from the Son, it comes from the Father. And the as point. a Christian, as a Trinitarian, we believe this. Right, no problem. Right? So, but if the Father is creating through the Son, yes. then all things are created through the Son. No problem. And therefore we can rightly say the Son is our Creator. No. Why not? Because it's in a passive sense. It's not in an active well, sense. No, no, brother, that's, that's irrelevant. Okay. So let, let, let me give you an example. Let, no, no, no. Let, let, I'll explain. I, no, let me explain. No, let, no, me explain let, let me give you. Let, let me, me give explain you. why. Let me explain why. If I'm an architect and I design a building and you're a builder and I give you oh. the design. One second. If I give I'm you. I'm going to use the Bible. If you go. No, use the Bible. no, no. I'm going to use the right, Bible. I'm going to gonna stop talking to you now because I'm just Bob, bored of how you interrupt. Bob, Bob, let me Answer use this Bible. question. No, I'm going to use the if Bible. If I'm an architect I'm gonna, and I give you a design for a building and you're the building company and you build the company, who's responsible for the building? You, the architect or the builder? I'm going to answer it biblically. Answer that question. I'm going to answer it biblically. Uh, you, you've got one chance to answer this biblically. analogy. Biblically. Answer no, this no, analogy. Biblically. biblically. Okay, guys, I'm sorry, but I'm just bored of. Bob, Constantly why being do you ignored. Want me to answer this biblically? Why no, want I want you to answer the question. I'm using Bible. If to I'm an architect no, and I give no. you the blueprint for a building, but I'm, you're the builder gonna, and I'm you build Jesus. it, who's responsible gonna, for the I'm building? Quote, you or me? I'm going to quote Jesus. Answer my question. Do you want me to quote Jesus? Or yeah, go for it. Go thank for you. It. Go for you. it. So Jesus says it like this: As the Father has life in Himself, yes. So, so I have life in myself. No, yeah. So He has granted yes the Son to have life. Yes, correct. So at what point did the Father grant the Son to have life? From eternity. How can you grant somebody to have life from eternity? It makes no sense. Right, it does make sense. Because the eternal movement of the begetting of the Son is an eternal act. It doesn't have a beginning Where and it doesn't have an end. Where are you getting this from? So when Jesus says, <laughs> when Jesus Dude, says... I'm talking from the Bible. You're talking says, from your... No, I, 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 I demonstrated change. in Proverbs 8 I was right. I've demonstrated from Colossians 1 that I was right. No, I've but... demonstrated from John 1, 3 that I was right. No, no. And all you're doing okay. is now so asserting. Listen, now listen so, to my point. bro, I'm, I'm actually done. I'm actually done having a conversation with you now. I'm going to stop. I'm no longer interested in continuing this conversation. Bob, do you want to because go to at no at point, point, at no, point. yes, of course, of course, I'm happy to have a drink with you. Okay. I'm not angry with you. I don't drink alcohol, it is right. just that I'm, I'm basically fed up of you constantly interrupting, ignoring the points that I'm I made, and not engaging what I'm saying. I'm trying to explain it from the and, Bible. And, and, and you don't like and, it. And, and, no, no, I, I am. Uh, so for that reason, I'm done. I'm finished. This is this is now over. Okay. We're, this conversation is over. Come back and talk to me another time. And just so you know, no, I, I just so you know, if you, want to if you ever want to talk to me again in this corner, I will no, no, only no, agree no. to do it with a no, time. No, no, I would never debate you again. Yeah, I, 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 because because if you can't uh, if you can't do timed, there's no, no, no point no, no. of our discussion. Because I want to pin you out, and I noticed now in this whilst debate, now whilst you, you were whilst while, whilst you weren't nasty or aggressive like Muslims are, you did interrupt consistently you like Muslims do. And it's not a problem sometimes. And, 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 I, and I, I said to you, and I said to you, if you kept extends, interrupting me, that that's what would happen. Anyway, have a lovely day. Bless you, Bob. Take care. Bless God you. bless. Right, guys, shall we do a wrap up? So, in a very grueling and, and not very productive kind of conversation, what we've seen is essentially the Unitarian repeat the kind of dialogue that we experience with Jehovah's Witnesses. You show them a passage, they try to jump to another passage. They never deal with the passage in front of them. And when, ladies and gentlemen, he was pinned to the very definition of the word and I was quoting the lexicon to him, he wanted to ignore its implications. He didn't want to engage with any of the analogies or the, the points that we were trying to make to elucidate the scripture. And the very scriptures that he wanted to go to all affirm Christ's eternality. All affirm Christ's eternality. The one point that he made that was interesting wasn't even his. It was the point that he made from the linguist. Now, he says it's a linguist. I'm willing to believe him. But I would be interested to know which linguist, what his qualifications are, who he was. And ladies and gentlemen, there's plenty of Christian linguists that engage with this material as well. I'm going to go and look into what people like Dr. Daniel Wallace say about this passage. Dr. James White say about this passage. Dr. Bruce Metzger say about this passage if he talks about it. These are Christian linguists that talk about the scriptures, so I'll go and see what they have to say about that. But even the linguist, which he was the only really interesting point, the linguist that he mentioned said, it is possible. Well, if it is possible, it is always not possible. It is always possibly something else. So maybe. 
and maybe, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't win an argument. You understand the word by the context that it is used in. You don't understand the word by looking at where that same word is used in another context, because many words can be translated in many different ways depending on the context. You use them in the passage that they're in to understand them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is sadly all that we had. The brother is more than welcome to have a cup of tea with me. I'll take him to the Marriott Hotel. And if he wants to debate me again, I'm happy to debate him again, but he'll have to agree to do it timed because at no point in this conversation did he not interrupt me or engage with the point that I wanted to make. So, thank you very much. I'm gone. Oh, he's gone. How are you doing? Peace for you, brother.